Hail Ogsal of my tribe, and welcome to the Modern Barbarian Podcast. Today I want to talk about a subject very near and dear to my heart, the Temple of Steel, or how to set up your home gym to help you build strength. Why should you build a home gym? How many of you remember the gym closings during coronavirus? Do you want to trust the government with your ability to work out and maintain your physical fitness? This is also a sacred place for me in my home. This is where I go when I need to focus on myself and focus my mind. It's where I do my firearms and martial arts practice. I set my gym up with the kind of music that I like, the kind of equipment that I need, in the layout that works best for me. You can decorate it however you want. Whatever motivates you to work hard and get stronger. This is your temple. Set it up the way you like. So in order to set up our home gym, the gym of uh, somebody trying to get stronger, let's call it the temple of steel of the modern barbarian. We need to remember that our key focus is performance. We need things that help us be stronger, move faster, and be harder to kill. If you're just getting started, this means the big five, which are the squat, the bench, the overhead press, the deadlift, and rows. All of these movements can be done with pretty minimal gear. You need a barbell, a weighter racket, a bench, and some weights. I also recommend a weight belt to help prevent injuries because injuries slow your training and make you vulnerable while they heal. If you do want to add a little bit of extra work, you can do barbell curls. They're the least important on the list, but anything that gets you stronger is a good thing. So I'm gonna tell you what I have in my personal gym. These are all pieces that I have personally bought and can vouch for having used them for the last five years or so. The first is gonna be your rack. I recommend a power rack, the full square rack. They can be had for a reasonable price now, are easily set up, hold a lot more weight and make this an overall more enjoyable and less injury prone experience. The rack that I use was made by Hulk Fit. It's called the Hulk Fit Power Rack. And you can get it for about $300 now. It's a pretty good rack too. Uh, comes with all the accessories you need, everything you need to get set up with just the rack, a barbell, and some weights, you're off and running. So the rack itself, the Hulk Fit Power Rack, about 300 bucks. And I will put links to all the things that I'm discussing here in the show notes so that you can go take a look at them and see if this stuff would work for you. Now this next one, this is where I'm going to splurge and spend a little bit more money. You could get something that is a whole lot cheaper than this and probably do the job, but I've used these particular barbells before. I really like these barbells. I know they're tough and strong and last and they a good barbell makes working out a lot more enjoyable the knurling's better it's not flexy and bendy it's just a much easier barbell to use so the bar i use is the rogue ohio power bar this bar is also about 300 dollars, like the rack now this, this is by far the best bar i've ever used i've been to a lot of gyms that had substandard bars i've been to a lot of different places And I wanted a nice bar in my home gym, so I bought a nice bar. And these Rogue Ohio Power Bars are top-tier bars. Excellent, excellent equipment. Can't go wrong there. Now, you can get, like I said, you can find something cheaper if you're on a little bit tighter of a budget than this allows. But I would recommend that you spend good money to have a really good bar. The next required piece for the temple there's going to be some kind of weights. Amazon has a brand called CAP, C-A-P, that uses the two-inch style Olympic weight plates, and they're the most affordable plates that I've been able to find. I've measured all the ones that I bought. They've come in within a few, you know, less than two pounds difference, usually a little bit heavy, which is fine. So they're really close on the weights that they're claimed to be, and you're not getting cheated out of them by getting lighter weights than what you're supposed to. For starting off, I would recommend two 45-pound plates, four 10-pound weights, 
four or five pound weights and six two and a half pound weights. You can get all of those from CAP for $225. Again, link will be in the show notes. Now, the reason I picked those weights, that's going to get you about 225 pounds, which is a really good starting point. And a dollar a pound is really, really, really good for weight. You're also going to need some kind of flat bench so that you can do your bench presses. And if you need to sit down like you want to do curls or you need to work on tying your shoes or something to sit on to put on your safety gear. Right, just having a flat bench in the temple is highly, highly rec- recommended. So I found one on Amazon. It was like fifty bucks. I've used it this entire time and had absolutely no issues with it. It's worked perfectly for me. I'll link it down below. And then your weight belt. Now this is one you could forego if you want to. You're not required to do a weight belt. I like them. They, I feel like they. Help me focus on keeping my movements right, bracing my core, doing all the things that you're supposed to do to be strong safely. And the weight belt was only 50 bucks. It's a nice thick leather one. By I'm sure it was made in China. I don't, you know, if you can find a good one made in the States that is a reasonable price, let me know. I would love to try it out and talk about it, but I have not found one that does what I need it to do that's not hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a strip of leather with some buckles on it. And I can personally recommend using a lever belt. For those of you that don't know what that is, it is a belt with a lever tightening mechanism. So you put it around yourself, you fasten it, or put the little pins in the holes, hold it together. You go look at the one online in the link. You'll see I'm talking about. There's a big lever on top of it. So when you're ready to lift, you pull that lever over. It sucks the belt down on you. Gets you a lot of tension in your belt so that you're good and safe, good, good and secure in your core. And when you're done, you pop the lever, and it's it's firm enough to stay on you, not falling on the ground, but it's loose enough that you breathe right, move right, and everything outside of the lift movements. So it's a really efficient type of belt. It adds a lot of really good support, and you can use a really thick leather with this lever and still get a good bind. So I personally recommend the lever belt. Now, this the cost of everything I just talked about, right? You can build the entire temple, a place in your home that has everything you need to go and focus on yourself and get strong with nobody in your way. It's only $925. Now, I know $925 can pay for a pretty good long gym membership, but you don't get the same thing at a gym that you're going to get in a home gym that you build and tailor to yourself. You'll always be waiting on equipment. You won't get as much done in the time that you have. You'll have to drive time there and back. The home gym is the most efficient way to stay fit. It also allows you to, you know, if the weather's horrible or whatever and you don't want to get out or you get snowed in if you live in those parts of the country or whatever it is, you have no excuse not to use your gym. Just walk down to it wherever it is. Mine's in my underground lair down here. I go through my temple every time I come down here to record down to the underground. But it's just right here below my house. I walk down to it. No problem. It's always there. Easy to get to. I can wake up and be in the gym in minutes. This basic setup will also get you into all the major compound movements as well as the ability to do pull-ups with the pull-up bar on the rack. The starting setup is 225 pounds, which if you are a novice will be more than enough weight. If you need more weight than this, you can shop used. You can make your own out of concrete. The molds can be had for about 70 bucks on Amazon. You pour your own concrete weights. Or you can just choose to spend a little bit more money. Or do more reps as you save up money to buy them. But the cool thing about the weights, the, the plates themselves individually are one of the cheapest things on here. So you can work with what you have, and the next time you get paid, buy another couple plates or buy one plate and keep adding the weight as you get stronger. It makes it a lot more affordable that way. Also, don't forget to check on something called Amazon Warehouse. This is where all of the returns go and open box items and things like that. You can buy things that have been returned or opened for a pretty big discount. Um, The bumper plates that I use, the Hulk Fit bumper plates, 
which we'll talk about later. I was able to find them at nearly half price on there. So I have a bunch of those that I like. So don't forget to check, you know, things like Amazon Warehouse. As for quality, only a few pieces need to be a top quality here. That's the bar itself and the power rack. And by top quality, I mean well built enough to keep you safe and be enjoyable to use. The Rogue power racks are a much higher quality rack than these Hulk Fit racks. But they're also two and three thousand dollars. This one's three hundred, rated up to a thousand pounds, and gets you everything you need. I can personally test for it. I've squatted five, six hundred pounds out of this rack. Not saying that I did it well, but I have loaded that much and put it on my back out of this rack and done it safely. And the stops held it in when you go down to the bottom, those kind of things. So the bar I'm recommending is the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. And the bar you choose should be of equal or greater quality to the one I have selected here. Cheap barbells tend to bend. They have a horrible knurling. They can cause you to get injured when you use them because you don't have the right grip on them. And then everything else can be the most affordable piece that you can find. But the bar has to be a quality piece. And don't be afraid to look around and buy a used quality bar. You know, some gym's closing down and they're getting rid of some stuff and they have some rogue bars laying around that are still in good shape. Pick one of those up. I mean, it's a piece of steel. As long as it's not bent, it's going to be good. To have your own gym in your house for under $1,000 is a pretty good setup. This is at a price point that anybody that decides they want this can attain it. And having a gym in your home is a major bonus for all the barbarians. It will keep you working out. It's easier to get to, easier to use, no waiting for equipment to open up, etc. I get my entire workout done between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. now, every time, with nobody ever in my way. This also allows me to let my tribe use my gym, which keeps us doing things together, saves them money, and helps with tribe camaraderie. To get all that for less than a grand is a pretty big deal to me. So that's your basic setup. Those are the pieces that are must-haves in order to have a basic gym. Now we're going to move on to some pieces that are just nice-to-haves. Things that I have that I really like. And with these pieces, we add some additional exercises we can do and some cardio. So, I've got seven things here. We'll talk, I'll list them all, They'll be and their prices, there'll be links in the show notes, and then we'll talk about them some, a little bit as to why these made this list. The first one is a log. If you've ever seen strongman lifting, a log is a type of exercise where you, it's a large diameter bar with handles inside of it, weights on the outside of it. You pick it up from the ground, clean, clean it to your chest, and press it overhead. It gives you a full body workout relatively quickly, and it's a lot of fun to use. Then I recommend some Hulk Fit bumper plates. These bumper plates let you do things like deadlifts and power cleans and the log and put your weights back down on the ground without damaging your floors. So because they're rubber and they're just a slightly bigger diameter than a steel plate, you know, just smidge. They hit the ground first, and they put the, the weight onto the rubber and protect the floor. Then there's some cardio equipment. You can use a rowing machine, a sled, a heavy bag, any of that kind of stuff. The ones that I have are the Everlast freestanding bag, which is about 140, 140 bucks. A rowing machine. Mine is the Obsidian Surge, made by Sunny Health get it on Amazon for 375 bucks. I use that thing hours at a time, a couple days a week, and it's never let me down. Now, it's a water rower, so the level of resistance that you get is based on how much water you put in it and how fast you go, but it's been plenty for me. I really, really enjoy it, and the feel is natural, and the sound of the water as you move, you know. It, it's going to sound a little cliche, I guess, but it helps me feel like I'm going back to an older time a more mechanical time, less electronic. And kind of, if you do it right, and set it up with a TV and stuff. I've got pictures of my setup on my social media that you can go take a look at. But you can watch old, like, Viking shows where they're rowing boats and, you know, row with them and that kind of stuff. So it adds some fun factor to it, which 
let's all face it, cardio needs a little bit of fun factor. It's one of the hardest and most boring parts of staying in shape is long, repetitive, high, you know, long value, long distance cardio. It can get so boring. We need it. We've got to keep our cardiovascular system in good shape. We have to be the monster that we're supposed to be so that we can protect our tribes. But that's probably the least enjoyable part. After the cardio equipment, you can add some dumbbells. I prefer the plate-loaded dumbbells because the 5, 10, and 25-pound weights that cap cells are the smaller diameter weights, the steel weights, and they fit. They're 2-inch, so they fit on a 2-inch plate-loadable dumbbell. So you can use that for all your stuff. A uh, good set that I found was on Amazon for like 50 bucks. They're rated for up to 300 pounds per hand. If you're curling more than 300 pounds at a time in a single hand, you're not listening to my podcast about workout equipment. You've probably already got that figured out, right? So these things work great. There'll be links to them in the show notes. And they're they're not as critical as your barbell because you're going to hold them in just your hand. You can let them go safely if you need to. And if the knurlings are not quite as good, it's not that big a deal. Then you also have elbow sleeves, knee sleeves, and wrist wraps. I use these ones that I found on Amazon. They're made by a company called Gym Reapers. They are neoprene knee sleeves and elbow sleeves and some wrist wraps with Velcro on them so you can protect all your joints. When you start getting heavier and start doing more compound, complex movements with a lot of weight, Protecting your joints is a big thing for me. It makes things more comfortable, keeps me wanting to work out, and makes me more cognizant of what I'm doing so that I can stay uninjured and lift more weight. I also recommend some mobility bands. These things are pretty cheap. They help you get stretched out and stuff and are good warm-ups. Something you can take with you easily in a bag if you got to travel. And they're only like 25 bucks. So, the total cost of this is going to be $1,100 for all of our additional nice-to-have pieces. Which is quite a bit of money, right? But think about what all we've got here. you got a full rowing machine. That was the most expensive one. And you don't have to have a rowing machine. That may not be your cardio. You may prefer to run. You may prefer doing kickboxing or MMA stuff so you get yourself a heavy bag for like 140 bucks you could use a weight sled i have one i built my own but you can buy them for you know a couple hundred bucks i'll have a link to one from amazon i've not personally used but i've had you know heard good reviews from some people that have used so that one would work pretty well now why are we looking at these pieces for these pieces we add some additional exercises to our gym and we can do some additional cardio the log could take place of the overhead press I prefer the motion as it seems to be more real life applicable to me. You have to take something from the ground and get it to over your head. That's a real life thing. Sometimes you got to pick stuff up off the ground and get it up to your chest and set it in a truck or up to a high shelf overhead to hand to somebody. That's a, a motion that you may have to do in real life. And to be able to practice that, it adds that clean. The clean is a what we call getting things from the hip level to the chest level if you were unaware. So it adds the clean motion to it to get it up to your chest and adds just a little bit more fun for me. The bumper plates help protect your floor and allow you to do power cleans to work on your explosive power. Power cleans are getting from the ground to the chest in one motion. You have to, in order to move any weight, it's kind of an Olympic lift. Uh, And in order to move any weight, you have to be fast and explosive. You have to build momentum. So that's beyond just strength. The difference between strength and power is the speed. Power is how quickly you can apply force. And strength is how much force you can apply. So in in order to train power, you have to have movements that require power, like power cleans. The cardio equipment can replace running and walking with motions that are more effective and less impact on your body. So if you have any kind of knee problems or ankle problems or anything like that, the rowing machine is really great. I like the rowing machine, like I said, because it helps tie back into things that I appreciate. That rowing of large boats was how our ancestors got around, right? That's how they went off to go raid and pillage. Now, we can't 
do the raiding and the pillaging nowadays and finding Viking longships to go row or old rowing boats like they had to get around is not really realistic. But having a rowing machine and using that same motion that they used and thinking about it can help tie that part of your history into your workouts, which I just thought was really cool. So I used the rowing machine. Dumbbells add many more exercises you can do as well, but more importantly, they allow you to work on any imbalances that you have in the body. If one of your arms is stronger than the other, you can fix that with dumbbells because you can focus on the weaker arm. You can give it a little bit more attention, a few more reps, and start getting your body balanced so that each side is as strong as the other and one side's not carrying any more load. That's an important thing to keep your body balanced. It also adds variety. Variety keeps things from getting boring. So if you're doing the same kind of lifts day in and day out all the time with no variety, you can get bored. If you're just starting, you'll be fine, right? Stick to the big five. You'll be moving up a couple pounds, probably five, every time you do that motion and the new PRs every day and that growth will keep you driven. But when things start to get to the point where you're not going to add five pounds every time, you're going to run out of that novice linear progression pretty quickly. I would say within six months to a year. You're going to want to add some variety to keep you moving, to move the muscles different ways, to keep things going. It also allows you, if you say you do wind up with an injury, you can train, you know, my right arm's all messed up. That doesn't mean I can't work on my left if my left's my weak side or keep, you know, keep things going with some variety and some different tools. Just add more things you can do to keep you working out even if things are a little boring at the time or you've got a little injury you're working around. The sleeves and the wrist wraps help make lifting a lot more comfortable. They're not required, but they do help eliminate pain and keep people from quitting. And the mobility bands are there for your warm-ups and your stretching, which helps prevent injuries. And preventing injuries is critical, and they cost next to nothing. So I can't speak highly enough for having those and using those. It's also something you can easily carry up out of the temple and you know work on your stretches while you're watching some TV in the living room or whatever. Have somebody help you with it if you want to get more stretch. But you don't have to stretch at the same time you're working out. But you do need to warm up before you get into your major workouts. All right, so now we've talked about the key requirements for your temple. Some nice things to have for your temple. And then I am going to talk about some things that I have that may be applicable to you or may not. Right? These are things that I personally like but are not required in any way. These are the things that I either bought or built myself, but I did them last. They were the lowest of importance. But often, they were the most fun. I will say this again. Variety keeps things interesting. Unless you are doing sports-specific training, then you do not need to pound the same routine over and over. Once you build a base amount of strength, remember that. Once you build a base amount of strength, you need to do the basics until you build your body to the minimum strength requirements of the modern barbarian. Then you do not need to pound that same routine over and over again. You can change things up from time to time. Add and subtract some different ways of working the muscles so you don't get bored. Do things you think are cool and fun. I'm looking at you, Husa Fellstone. This is your temple of steel. Make it a place you want to go, that you want to play in, that makes you enjoy getting stronger. So I got 10 pieces here that are things that I personally enjoy, and that's why they're in my gym. One of them is called a Husafel Stone. This is pretty specific, and I only recommend it if you want to do strongman type stuff. Otherwise, you can just use a sandbag and get kind of the same motion. Or if you just really like it, right? If you think it's really cool and you want one, go get it. I spent 50 bucks on some masonry blades for my grinder, and I cut this thing myself from a big rock I got up in the mountains. I went and found it, I drug it out myself, marked everything out on the rock, cut it out myself, chiseled and ground and all that stuff to get it the right shape and to the right weight that I needed. And if you don't have a big rock around, then you can usually go find a place that sells stones and such as decorations or granite countertop places and stuff, and they can get you a rock of the appropriate size, and many of them will even cut it for you if you buy it. 
Now, if you've never seen the real Husafell stone, it's kind of a cool story. It was uh, over in Iceland, I believe it was, but don't quote me on that. This old, uh, older guy who was a religious preacher of some kind over there had built this big pen for his sheep out of rocks. And the door to the pen was about a 400-pound stone called the Husafell stone. And it became this test of strength of whether or not you could open or and close the pen. And after that, they started seeing who could carry it the most laps around the pen for strength. And that was kind of a test of strength in the area of who could pick up this stone and carry it around. So it was kind of cool. The one I cut for myself is about 215 pounds. It's not as heavy as the original. Uh, but getting 215 pound rock off the floor and carrying it around is plenty heavy. You can also buy these plate loadable. They they you know weld them out of steel and they've got the stuff inside to be plate loadable, so you can just add weight plates to them, or you could you know pour lead shot in them or sand or whatever to get the weight where you want. So if it's something you think's cool, uh, it's the event is known as a shield carry or who's fell stones. So you got this big thing, you got to carry it around. It's a lot of fun. The second one I talk I like is called a mace bell. And it's exactly what it would sound like. It's a big ass steel mace. You got a head on one end, a large steel stick down that you hold on to, and it works for cardio and lightweight training. It's easy to travel with, and you get to beat the hell out of stuff. One of the exercises is literally hit things with this as hard as you can. So it's a it's a lot of fun, and it's a legitimate tool too. Like this thing could be used as a weapon. We're talking about a solid steel shaft with a solid steel head. If you were you know, in some kind of, they call it the zombie apocalypse, and you got to smash heads, right? This thing would do it, and knowing how to run it is a cool, cool backup. So you get to work out while learning how to use a weapon. That's always cool for a barbarian to do. Then we have the trap bar. And this can be used for frame carries and for deadlifts. The one I have, I would not recommend. I'm not even going to link it. I have going to have to buy a new one because I've bent this one all the crap and I'm not even super strong. You know, I got it loaded up about 400 pounds or so and this thing really started to give way. Uh, it does not like being loaded that heavy. So I will find another one at some point. Probably have to go with a rogue one. But this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about you need good quality bars. I bought a cheaper one just to have one. And for some of the tribe that's in the lower weights, it's worked fine. I've un unbent it, put it all back together. And they're using it just fine. But at the weights I'm at, this thing's falling apart on me. I can't use it like that. So I don't have that capability for myself anymore. So what I did find, though, that worked really well to do the same thing are called Farmer's Walk Handles. Uh, I'll put a link to these in the show notes. You can get them on Amazon. They're only 60 bucks, And they're a great grip and endurance exercise. You can do the same stuff with these that you do with a trap bar. It's a little less secure because they're not tied together, which is fine. It helps you work your, you know, your uh, core muscles and keep everything tight and controlled. They're really good grip exercises. Uh, I've had over 200 pounds per hand on these things. You know, and they've held up great, and you can, with no straps, you know, picking these things up with the handles on them with that much weight. Really good for practicing your grip and increasing that grip strength. And for 60 bucks, you know what I mean? Everybody at some point can come up with 60 bucks if this is something you want to have in your gym. The endurance side of it is you, you load them up real heavy and you pick them up and you see how far you can walk with them before you drop them. Uh, and that's a really good one too. It helps with that mental toughness. You find that as you work on these heavy, hard, high endurance things, you will increase your mental toughness too. The next one I've got is just an old tire. These are used to drop bars on, hit with a mace, or if you can get a tractor size one, then you can do tire flips. I haven't been able to get a hold of one of those yet. I'm just using some old car tires. Uh, but used tire shops will often give you tires for free because they're too worn out to sell, and it keeps them from having to pay to dispose of them. So you know, you're doing them a favor. You're recycling a little bit. And you get it for free. You get to beat the hell out of it, and when you're done, you find a tire disposal place and you throw it away if you ever need to get rid of it. Uh, so they're, they're a good thing to have. They can also help with protecting your floor. I use them with the log because that's, you know, when I go to drop the log, if I don't have bumper plates on it, I can drop it on the tires and not break the concrete in the floor. 
Next one's a sandbag. Now, I started with just one of the cheap Amazon sandbags, and I blew that thing out in no time. So now I use a surplus military sea bag. They're super tough, heavy built. I fill it with uh, gravel because the sand likes to run out of the stuff on it, but you use that round edge, like uh, river rock gravel, you know, pea gravel. It fills it up. It gets plenty of weight in it. There's no sharp edges. It doesn't hurt your bag, and it's easier to contain inside the bag. Uh, there are new ones available online if you can't find a surplus one, but I can't attest to their quality because I've never used one of the new reproductions, so I don't know. But you can use a sandbag for doing, you know, the shield carry. You can, there are, you know, sandbag to shoulder motion, sandbag to overhead, sandbag to chest, all kinds of different things you can do with it that are good for uh, usable strength, right? Getting something from the ground up, carrying things, all that stuff, that's a usable type of motion, something you'll actually do in a daily life type setting so you can practice it and get stronger while doing it. Another tool that's good to have is a kettlebell. I found a 35 pounder on sale at a local store. I don't use it very often, but I do like it when I travel. Uh, 35 pounds is enough to do curls with. You can do cardio with kettlebell swings. You can overhead press with it. You, know, you can do a lot of different things with this kettlebell. So it's really good to have for travel. Have one thing you can grab if you're going home for you know, out of town for some vacation or going to see your parents for Christmas or whatever and you want to keep up with your routine of the days that you go to the temple and work on yourself, then this is something you can take with you to take that with you. Next on the list is the Atlas Stone. If you're going to get one of these, don't get it right away. Most people stone about half their deadlift, maybe a little less. If you get the plate loadable ones, they are crazy expensive. And if you want a large size range of these things, they take up a lot of room. So you can start using a sandbag for this motion. Pick it up to the ground, get it over the bar, load stone loading. You can do that with your sandbag. And sandbags are a cheap way to get an adjustable weight of that until you start building up some strength to where you want you know okay if I get a stone in this size I'll use it for a while because at first you're going to gain strength crazy fast right and the stone you would make the first time you wouldn't be able to use very long so wait until you start to get through some of your novice linear progression and you start to get to where okay I'm going to be going up in strength a lot slower now and I want to add some more fun stuff before you go looking at the stone because it's a pretty big investment. You've got to buy the mold. you got to buy all the concrete. There's a lot of time invested into it because you have to make your own. There's not any available pre-made that I've found. So you're going to be making your own big concrete round rock, basically, to pick up and put over a bar or do things with. So I recommend that you don't get that one right up front unless you're going to get a plate loadable one. The stone molds range about 120 bucks per each size that you want to make. So they come in different diameters and each diameter comes out to about a different, you know, approximate weight. They weigh differently depending on the types of concrete you use, if you put any reinforcement in them, all that kind of stuff. So you'll have to measure yours when you make it to get what it actually weighs. But they're good to have and they're a lot of fun. I don't currently have any in the gym right now just because my Temple of Steel is in a one bay of a two car garage. And I just don't have room for that kind of stuff. But when I get to my final place, when I build the compound and then the gym there that we're going to have, I will definitely have room for it. And we will have stones because they are a great exercise and they are a lot of fun. A good way to make yourself stronger, increase endurance, and just have fun with your tribe. All right. Next on the list is our T-bar attachment. If you don't know what that is, it's a little attachment that goes onto your rack. You put one end of your barbell in it, and this thing's on the ground, or real close to it, and it has a joint in it. So you can pick up a barbell on a lever from one end, and you put weights on the end, uh, on the other side, and you put different kinds of handles on it. Now what this does is allow you to do things like rows, uh, Viking presses, and many other movements. So you can p uh, put plates on it and different kind of handles to do all these different kind of movements. The one I got was the one designed for my Hulk Fit Power Rack. It was only 25 bucks, and it's added a lot of really cool stuff that I can do in my rack now. So, you know, the one I really like is the Viking Press. It's another variation of the overhead press where the weight is behind you, and you're 
picking up like with a lever, right? Which is another real life thing, using levers to move things and pick up heavy things. So it's a, a cool workout that also has some real life application. And last thing on the list is the adjustable bench. The one I bought is currently unavailable, but this one isn't super important, right? Just find a decent adjustable bench. I use the incline bench for, or the adjustable bench for my incline presses is about the only thing. Sometimes you use, um, you know, you can use a decline setting in the ankle holder to do like curls and stuff like that. So it adds some flexibility to the gym but it's not super critical that you have one of these. Plan to spend a couple hundred bucks if you do want one though. It was one of any kind of quality that you'd want to actually put yourself and any kind of weight that you're going to be lifting on. You don't want to cheap out on this. Because if it falls apart on you, it would suck. All right, so that's the end of the nice to haves or things that I would like but are not required. Excuse me, not the nice to haves. We already did those. So we've talked about pretty much all the equipment that goes into the gym. But next, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Why do I call this the Temple of Steel? This is more than just a home gym. So we are going to decorate this place to our own liking. I like my temple to be simple, but that may not be your thing. I like to have some stuff in it that reminds me why I'm doing what I'm doing. Who I'm trying to be. Who I am being this for, why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? So one of the things I keep in mind are two whiteboards, one for myself and one for the Nega Barbarian. So I write down what he was doing, where he's at, and I write down where I'm at. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, you can go see my previous episode where I talk about the Nega Barbarian, and I'll put the link to that in the show notes. I also keep things that I need for my MMA and firearms practice in my temple. There are dry practice charts and boxing punch charts in there. As a barbarian, I draw strength from my heroes of legend. So I keep things in my temple to remind me of those heroes and push me to work as hard and be as strong as they did. I think of people like the god Thor, Hercules, Samson. Every religion has a strength-based hero. Pick the ones that mean something to you and put them in your temple. It said mine was Thor. And then he had his son, Mahdi, who was the god of strength for the Norse pagans, right? So stuff like that. People you can look up to. Maybe yours are real-life people. Maybe you're into Strongman and you know who, like, Brian Shaw and or Nick Best or Eddie Hall or... Any of these guys that are at the top of this level, you can see them. They're these huge monsters, you know, three, four hundred pound men that lift thousands and thousands of pounds and pull freight trains down the track. You know, maybe that's what you're into. Maybe that's the level of strength you want. Keep things like that that your heroes need to be in your temple to remind you why you work so hard, to remind you what's possible, to know. There are human beings out there that can do this. And if they can do that, I can definitely do what I'm trying to do. Help keep yourself motivated. And remember that this temple is not just for weight training. This is where you do all of your barbarian work. This is where you practice your firearms. This is where you keep up with your striking, your jiu-jitsu, whatever fighting styles you're, you've picked up on that you like to do. This is where you can go practice those things. This is where your heavy bags will be. This is where your gloves will be. You know, so make sure that you set this place up for all the things that you need to be doing in your temple. This is where you will train your mind and your body to be the barbarian warrior that you're supposed to be to defend your tribe. And not just you. Make sure you have room for your whole tribe. Invite your tribe to this place. Train with them. Show them what you know. Learn from them. Work together as a tribe. That's how the tribe gets stronger. You should always be trying to increase your tribe and work together with your tribe to get better as a tribe. Because I don't care how big and how strong you are. A tribe of six dudes or 
six well sought out people that work together and know what they're doing. You can be the strongest man alive and the fastest shot on the planet and be damn near bulletproof. And those six people are going to kick your ass. Work on your tribe. Your tribe is where all your strength is. It's where all your strength comes from, is the tribe. And the last part of this temple is that it needs to be a sacred place for you. And by that I mean that this is where you go to commune with your spirituality. This is where you go and talk to whatever gods you choose to follow. By putting that in that same place, by making this a true temple of steel, you hold yourself accountable, not just to you, not just to your tribe, but also to your gods. You go there to try and be closer to them. And if, if you are an atheist, then so be it. Think about your heroes there. The people that you admire, right? It can do the same thing for you. Hold yourself accountable to that higher power, whatever it is for you. If that comes from inside of you, that's fine. If that comes from a deity you believe in, that's fine. But this should be the place where you do that. Because adding that level of this, making this actually a temple of steel adding that reverence to it helps you take this more seriously. And this stuff is serious. Your strength, your speed, your stamina, your ability to be deadly are critical aspects of being a modern barbarian. They're critical aspects of being a performing member of your tribe. Your tribe needs you to be the best you that you can be and they deserve that from you so that the tribe can be the best that it can be. Hold yourself accountable to these people that you care about and that care about you. Hold yourself accountable to your higher power. Make sure this place carries reverence for you because that is critically important. All right, so let's go through some conclusions. Let's uh, wrap up today. What we've been talking about, what we've gone through, Drive home a few key points, and then we'll close out. Number one, building the home gym is something I recommend for every barbarian. It will improve your strength, bring your tribe closer together, give you a way to test potential tribe members. We actually didn't talk about that one in depth, so I'll go over it right here. Potential tribe members. Invite them to the gym with you. Bring them to the temple. See what they're capable of. See how they work out. See if they take it serious, how hard they're willing to push. This is a great test for those that are trying to join your tribe. A way to see what they're made of. So, use your temple for that too. And this also allows you to build a place in your home that means something special to you as a barbarian. Number two, the equipment need not be overly expensive. It can be purchased in stages and you get to start working out with as little as just a barbell and a couple weights. You can buy the barbell and a couple weights first. They're the most important pieces. And you can start working out immediately while you save money to get all the other stuff. Even the stuff that I said was critical. None of it's as critical as the barbell and the weights. Everything else can come after. So start there. You need to keep it interesting for yourself. Have fun in your temple. But take it serious and be there with a purpose. You need to enjoy your time there. But it needs to be reverent. You need to take it seriously. Know that you're there for a reason and not just be fucking off. Number four. I put together a dry practice routine poster that I will include in the show notes. I'll put a link up for it. I'll give it to everybody for free. Feel free to use it and put it up in your temple. But that's one of those decorations that I talked about where it it's there, but it has a purpose. It reminds you that I need to be proficient with whatever this is. For dry practice, it's firearms, right? One of the skills that you need. I need to be proficient in this, so I put that in my temple. When I go down there and when I work out, I see this, and it reminds me to work on that daily. If you want to do hand-to-hand -hand instead of a gun, put a, a boxing numbers punch chart 
up there and work through your punches every day. But any kind of thing you can put up like that that reminds you to work on what you're supposed to be. And that's really all I've got, guys. That's wraps it up. Just remember that it's supposed to be a reverent place. Decorated in a way that reminds you to take it seriously. That reminds you that you're there to be a better barbarian and be closer to your tribe and to your higher power, whatever that be. And with that, we'll go into our closing. Don't forget about my social medias. That's where we're going to start building this tribe. You go there to find other barbarians in your area and see if they want to be a part of your tribe. Because I know, if you guys are anything like me, finding barbarians is fucking hard. There's not a lot of us out there, it seems. But you are not alone. There are more. Go to these social medias. When you get there, you'll find other people like you that listen to stuff like this that want to do the things that you want to do. And eventually you'll find some in your area and start to build that tribe. I'll put links to all these in the show notes, but we're going to read them off here just so you can hear them. We've got Facebook. Our Facebook is the Modern Barbarian Podcast. The link has got some weird numbers and shit in it. It'll be down below. But look for the Modern Barbarian Podcast on Facebook. On Reddit, r slash Modern Barbarian P-O-D. On Twitter, it's at M-O-D underscore Barbarian. On Instagram, it's the Modern Barbarian Podcast. We're on iHeartRadio now. We're on Spotify now. Apple Podcasts. And we also have a Tumblr blog. On Tumblr, it is tumblr.com slash blog slash the Modern Barbarian Podcast. So we're all over the damn internet. Anywhere you are, you can probably find us on there. Share this with your friends. Share this with your family. Share this with people you think are barbarians like you. Get the word out. Let's start building this online tribe so that you guys can use these resources to start building your local tribes. Help me help you. Help me put this together to help all the barbarians across the country who feel alone and haven't been able to find anyone yet. Let's start building these small local tribes. Let's start getting this shit put together and start making a difference in this country together by getting the hell out of this whole big country mentality and start getting into a tribal mentality. Start building locally. You do that by going to help me help you with some of the social media. This is for you guys, not for me. These are put together for you guys to help you find your tribe. So please use them. And with that, we're going to log off. Remember to check the show notes for links to everything. There's going to be a bunch. There's going to be a big show notes, right? There's links to every piece of the equipment we talked about. There's links to all the social medias in there. There's links to all that stuff. So check your show notes. Thank you guys for listening. Martin Barbarian, signing off.